Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come before you to ask that you will speak to each and every one of us. We pray that your Holy Spirit may be seen, may be felt, may be heard. We ask that you will empty us of the wisdom of this world and you will fill us with the wisdom of heaven. Please turn our eyes to Jesus right now. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. There were so many ups and downs, so many twists and turns, and the terrain was terrible at best. There were still places with mud, but I thank God because he prevented the rain from coming for the past week, and the roads were not as muddy as when we came in. We took the better road, which still wasn't good. I was so tired trying to hold on to the bike. These were the words that I wrote, coming out from no man's land after our mission trip. The journey lasted for six and a half hours. It was so painful, so tiring, so tedious. But it taught me one very important lesson, and that lesson I will share with you today. The path, as most of you have probably heard, was not nice, smooth like the roads that we have here in Malaysia. Steep slopes up and down, we had to turn here and there, and it felt like it was unending. We had to cross through mud puddles, we had to cross through streams and even rivers on motorbike. And rice fields that were so flooded that the bike couldn't pass through with us sitting on, we had to get down and walk through the muddy rice fields. We had to ride over tree roots, like how some of you know, um, imagine riding a bike up and down Gunung Datuk. And it was so slippery. I got hurt multiple times, my driver did as well. And halfway through the journey, because of the extensive usage of the brakes, our brake pads wore out. We were going downhill and my driver realized something was wrong. And I realized it too, the brake pads were gone. He had to stop, by the grace of God, he packed extra brake pads. And so he fixed the bike and we went on our journey. There were times when I doubted the driver's ability to bring me through. There were times when I was thinking, can this old bike make it? And there were so many times when, in my own wisdom, I just jumped off the bike and let the driver go by himself because I was thinking he's not going to make it. But then later on, I saw him go and I was like, hmm, actually, he could. That's when this thought came to my mind. And this is what I want to share today. Stay with your driver. Yes, I was tempted to doubt his ability. Regardless, he was still a good driver. He brought us the last time we went, and this time he brought me again. And even though I was so tempted to doubt, I knew I could trust him. There were times when I wondered if he knew the way, because most of the time, we were alone. There were bikes in front. I mean, our group, some of them were in front, some were behind, and I couldn't see any of them. We were just alone on the long road by ourselves. And then later on, I realized that actually, yeah, he does know the way. He knows how to ride the bike. He's skilled. I think, in my opinion, if there's a PhD for bike riding, these people need to have it. They are so skilled. They can ride through anything. And he has been through the path so many times. He will bring me safely to my destination. This taught me a very big spiritual lesson. On the journey of this life, Jesus is the driver. And I can draw so many comparisons between my driver and Jesus. So I'm going to share with you some of it. I hope I don't lose you. The six-hour journey and the journey to heaven. I have a human driver here, and here I have Jesus. The journey was very rough. It was very muddy. There were so many ups and downs. And it is the same on our journey to heaven. We are traveling the narrow road. On this journey, I needed to trust my driver. When he asked me to get down, I need to get down. When he didn't ask me to get down, I should have stayed with him. He knows the way, and if I do not trust him, I will make it harder for him to actually bring me through. And it is the same with Jesus. Jesus knows what he is doing. We need to learn to trust him. Otherwise, we make it so hard for him to do what he wants to do for us as well. And furthermore, if we do not trust Jesus, we can never have peace on this journey. 
my driver was willing to get hurt. Twice he lost his slippers because he went through the river and then the slipper just came off. He got hit by branches because his hand had to be on the steering wheel. He couldn't do anything. And he even banged his leg on the road many times. Jesus left the pure and holy atmosphere of heaven to come down to earth to get himself dirty just so he could bring us safely to our destination. My driver knew the road. He had passed that way many times. And Jesus himself knows the road to heaven. He came down from heaven. He passed through the road that we are passing through right now. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There were times when I noticed that my driver was a very confident driver. But at times he paused a little while. And I felt that he was thinking and then he took a certain road. Because that was in his wisdom the best path, the safest path to go. Jesus does not simply lead us through any road. He carefully considers every path that we need to take. And at least as is written in the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, there have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to men. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. At times, my driver looked at the road and he said, please walk. And so I came down and I walked. And I didn't have to be afraid because when I reached a safer part, he was always there waiting for me. Jesus will often have to lead us through places where it will be dangerous, where we will have to walk. You know, those that have been to Gunung Datuk, you know it's not easy to climb up and down. And because it was raining, it had been raining, the roads were muddy, muddy and slippery. So it was tiring, you know, having to walk and having to run just to keep up with your driver. And it is the same in our spiritual life. There will be times when God will allow us to go through things that we feel so tired. Why do I have to walk again? Why do I have to do this again? But we can have the confidence that He is waiting there with us. He is always there to help us, watching over us at every moment. <clears throat> the last comparison that I came to, my driver had only one aim. That was to bring me safely out of no man's land to the river so that I could get home. And Jesus is the same. In this journey of life, Jesus has only one aim for all of us, and that is to bring us safely to our destination. I want to invite you to turn with me to your Bibles. We will go to John chapter 6, verses 37 to 40. John chapter 6, 37 to 40. I will read, it says, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and he that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Bible tells us in John chapter 3 that Jesus died so that when he was lifted up, everyone who would look to him and believe on him should be saved. And here Jesus repeats the same message. Those that believe on me, those that look to me, believe on me and trust in me. He said, I will never lose a single one of them. Jesus has only one aim, and that is to bring us safely to heaven. Again, we see the same picture. Let's turn to John chapter 10, verses 27 to 28. John 10, 27 to 28. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Jesus' love for us is constant. 
Jesus has never lost a single soul who came to him, and his record will never be broken. His aim from living in heaven to coming down to this earth to dying and going back to heaven has been the same. It is to bring us safely to our destination. In this journey of life, there will be many times when we are so tired of hanging on. You know, when I was sitting on the bike, when we were going up the slope, I had to hold on, otherwise I would fall backwards. When we were going downhill, I had to hold on, hold on otherwise I would crash into my rider. There was no way, I just had to hold on. My muscles were burning. I had to find different positions so that I would use different muscles so that I would balance out the other muscles that were already tired. My knees were hurting because of the sitting position and we were constantly, we were not riding, we were hopping, you know. The bike was hopping along the road. It was so tiring. And in this journey of life, there will be times when we are so tired of hanging on. It feels like, God, I cannot anymore. I felt like, oh, can I just relax for a while? But then I knew I would crash into my driver and then we'll probably, you know, fall down together. And it's the same in this life. The ups and downs may seem unhandy. The twists and turns may seem to make you so dizzy. And the road may seem to go on forever and ever. But in times like this, we need to trust our friends. When it seems like it's so much easier, let me just walk and I will reach faster. We need to stay with our driver. He knows the way. He has been through this road himself. And he will bring us safely to heaven. No, things will not always go our way. No, we may not understand why is this happening to me? Why do I have to go through this? We may feel like nothing makes sense at all. But will we choose to pray and to hold on? Over the past two weeks, I have been reading about the life experiences of Ellen White. And as I read, I was so inspired. You would think that the prophet of God would have life easier, at least a little bit. But let me tell you, I think she had life so much harder than any of us. When she was nine years old, she got into an accident that left her sick for all her life. Pretty much, she almost died. She had to stop her education at grade three. She never graduated from middle school or high school. She does not have a diploma. When she was called by God to become a prophet and she answered the call, it left her being mocked, being ridiculed, being shunned by the church and with so many questions, am I doing the right thing? As a young mother, after having her first child, imagine the joy of holding your baby. But the message comes from God, you need to leave your baby, your infant, with somebody else. Go forward to another place to do the work that I have given you to do. And then, her youngest son dies as a baby. She prayed that if it's God's will, he would spare them this heartbreak, but he did not. A few years later, her eldest son, at 16 years old, died. Many years later, she lost her husband, and she writes this experience, Oh, how I miss him. I know that he has given his life to God. I know that I will see him again in heaven but I long to hear his words of counsel. But then she writes in the next sentence, but God is my counselor. She suffered so much. She was called by the great, uh, by the general conference. Sorry, GC is great controversy. So <laughs> she was called by the general conference to go to Australia. She answered the call because she believes that the general conference is the leadership that God has placed above her. She went. Upon arrival, she thought, yes, I can do the work that God has called me to do now, but no, it was not meant to be. She fell sick immediately. The sickness was not one day, it was not two days, it was not one week. It lasted more than nine months. And she writes in her experience, you can read, you know, day after day, she writes her record. And nine months later, she writes, in the past nine months, I have been unable to sleep but two hours a night. For me, when I cannot sleep and I get six hours a night, I feel like I'm going crazy already. But she says, I was unable to sleep only two hours. 
But in the night when I cannot sleep, she says, how comforting it is to know that he who never slumbers is by my side. And she says, I am encouraged. When I pray, I receive strength from God. When I awake at, in the night, I pray, and God gives me the message to write. I cannot sit up because of the pain, but I am propped up by the pillows, and in this lying position, I am unable to use my crippled hand to write. Suffering upon suffering upon suffering. But at her deathbed, the last words that she told her son and her nurse were this, I know in whom I have believed. And Ellen White knew that when she goes to heaven, she will see her infant whom she lost, she will see Henry, her 16-year-old son who died, she will meet her husband again, and the many people whom she lost who were dear to her. Then this is what she wrote. I'm going to read you a long quote, but listen carefully. The way to heaven is consecrated by the Savior's footprints. The path may be steep and rugged, but Jesus has traveled the way. His feet have pressed down the cruel thorns to make the pathway easier for us. Every burden that we are called to bear, He Himself has borne. Today, the same tender, sympathizing heart of Jesus is open to all the woes of humanity. Today, that hand that was pierced is rich for to bless more abundantly his people that are in the world. And this is the promise, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. The soul that has given himself to Christ is more precious in his sight than the whole world. The Savior would have passed through the agony of Calvary that one might be saved in his kingdom. He will never abandon one for whom he has died. Unless his followers choose to leave him, he will hold them fast. Through our trials, we have a never failing helper. He does not leave us alone to struggle with temptation, to battle with evil, and be finally crushed with burden and sorrow. Though now he is hidden from mortal sight, the ear of faith can hear his voice saying, Fear not, I am with you. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. I have endured your sorrows, experienced your struggles, encountered your temptations. I know your tears. I too have wept. The griefs that lie too deep to be breathed into any human ear, I know. Think not that you are desolate and forsaken. Though your pain touch no responsive cause in any heart on earth, look unto me and live. The mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. Say of the Lord that has mercy on me. Every time when I'm tempted, every time when I go through something that I feel like, God, this is too much. This is the passage that comes back to me again and again. And the God who has never lost a single soul will not break his record. Jesus has lived, he has died, and rose again to do the Father's will. And that will is to bring every single one of us safely to heaven. Every single one who trusts in him, every single one who places themselves in his hand, he will never let go. What more do we want to ask for when we have this precious promise that God will make himself responsible for our salvation? God does not promise us trouble and life, but he promised to be with us all the way. He promised that he will be there until we arrive in heaven. Whatever stage of life you are in today, God knows. Whatever you may be going through physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, He is still in control. Will you choose today to stay with your driver and allow Him to bring you safely to your destination? Do you want to choose today to trust Him even if things do not go your way? 
Will you choose to follow the way he leads, even if it brings you through endless ups and downs and twists and turns? Will you commit today, or recommit again today, to following Jesus all the way until he brings you facing back to heaven? If that is your desire, I want to invite you to stand with me and pray. Father in heaven, thank you that we can trust in you. Indeed, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Yes, Lord, we have faced challenges in our life and we know there are more to come. But we know that you have hold, held our hand and you will never let go of us. We ask today that even as we recommit ourselves to you, to let you bring us safely to heaven, you will help us to hold on and never let go because we know that you yourself will never let go of us. We commit our lives to you. Give us the faith that we need for this time. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.